A year ago, that is before New Year's Day of 2016, I was of the view that the refugees who were fleeing war-torn Syria should be taken into the West for humanitarian reasons. I didn't know much about it. For example, I didn't know that most of them were not Syrian and were not fleeing danger and therefore were not refugees but were rather migrants. But on principle, I thought, and I still do think, that people in danger should be helped. I fiercely debated against people who claimed that they were all terrorists or suggested that they were mostly terrorists, and I still do, because most of them are not. I believe in peace and non-violence and an equality of opportunity for all. I am against violence and, well, I'm against non-voluntary violence. My view on this issue changed in the first few days of the new year of 2016. In the number of European cities during the New Year's Eve celebrations, there was a wave of rapes committed by the migrants, many who were planning and strategically coordinating these gang rapes. The left-wing establishment of Europe, well, actually, the left-wing establishment of the West in general, let's face it, including the government and the media, tried very hard to suppress the truth about these wave of rapes. They tried to deny that the rapes occurred, or if they admitted that they occurred, they tried to say that the perpetrators were not migrants, or otherwise they lied directly or indirectly about this wave of rapes. And overall, what really got to me was the fact that people, people on social media, the overall denial that these wave of migrant rapes occurred without actually looking into the information was very disturbing. In other words, most people that I interacted with about this issue flat out denied, stuck their head in the sand, would not even look into it, just said, no, 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 you're being racist, 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 without actually looking into any of the evidence. This is willful ignorance, and one of my biggest pet peeves is when people intentionally deceive themselves about the truth. And that is what people have done. They're still doing it. And because of this general denial of what happened last year, we can expect the same thing to happen this year, because those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. These people will, well, I predict there will be um, slightly more preparation. You see, last year the police precincts complained that they wanted to have more presence out on the streets during the celebrations in European cities to prevent the migrants from committing crimes. However, their higher-ups denied this. They would not let them staff more police people to protect the people. You see, the police predicted what was going to happen. They knew. But the left-wing establishment who rules over the police would not let them do their own job. Will that change this year? Not so sure. I mean, we see Merkel has turned around on the whole migrant crisis thing. So perhaps the left-wing establishment in cities like Köln and etc. will allow the police to have more of a presence on the streets. But perhaps they'll deem that as racist or something like that. And I also predict that we'll see uh, patrols of good people who are just trying to stop women from being raped, being labeled by the left-wing establishment as being white nationalists, far-right Nazis, and etc. Of course, there will be a white nationalist, racist presence out on the streets, of course, but the left-wing media will label anybody who wants to stop these rapists as being white nationalists, racists, and etc., further discrediting them. Here's an article, for example, that refers to good German people as neo-Nazis. Upon reading the article, it seems that they're suggesting that Pegida is a neo-Nazi organization. Pegida, by the way, is an organization that is specifically anti-Nazi, as well as anti-communist, anti-Antifa, making them anti-violent mob, and anti-ISIS. It was reported that hundreds or up to 1,200 German women were sexually assaulted during New Year's Eve celebrations of 2015-2016 in the cities of Hamburg, Bielfeld, Dortmund, Dusseldorf, Köln, Frankfurt, and Stuttgart. This is according to Die Welt, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, and also RP Online by an estimated of 2,000 men, according to Washington Post, mostly who were, according to German police, men of, quote, Arab or North African appearance, unquote, according to the BBC, according to Deutsche Welle, Reuters, and Wall Street Journal. Nothing like this had happened before on such a huge scale, according to BBC, according to Deutsche Welle, Reuters, and Wall Street Journal. More specifically, Chief Prosecutor Ulrich Bremer said that the quote, overwhelming majority, unquote, of the suspects were migrants, illegal immigrants, and refugees, though some of the media deny this. This is according to the Associated Press in Guterich. Now, I have to stop right here and point out that according to the German people themselves, the police only report or release information on a small fraction of cases. This is according to the Einzelfall list. And according to the German people through Einzelfall list and Correct V, quote, We emphasize that this is only a fraction of the actual attacks, since the police, not to all cases, a press releases. You know what they mean there. In Vienna, for example, a study was conducted with the result that more than 200,000 
less than 2,000 press releases. So we're talking about 1% according to this. That would mean that 99% of the cases do not get released to the public or to the press. To 647 reported rapes, there were only 15 Pressmittlungen, that means press releases. Also keep in mind that of 647 reported rapes, only 15 were released to the press, according to Einsenfall List and Correct V. In contradiction to what the Minister of the Interior, Ralph Yeager, tried to claim, according to Speichel, the perpetrators use social media to plan the gang rapes, according to Daily Express, Focus, Local, and Speichel, called Taharush Jamaya, or Taharush Jabia. The Federal Criminal Police Office is aware of a phenomenon of jointly committed sexual harassment of women in public, which is called Taharush Jamaya. Until now, this phenomenon had not been known in Germany. Taharush Jamaya is an Arabic word to describe group harassment. Uh, the type of crime is uh, usually committed by young men during mass gatherings, such as festivals and demonstrations. Uh, usually an inner circle attacks the victim, while an outer circle distracts the onlookers. You can hear them chanting it in these videos. Listen. <laughs> Recall, if you would, the gang rape of Lara Logan a few years ago in Egypt in Tahrir Square. It is true that in Egypt in particular, sexual harassment and violence are common. I had no idea how endemic that it is so rife, so widespread, that so many Egyptian men um, admit to sexually harassing women and think it's completely acceptable, in fact, blame the women for it. The night of February 11th, the Egyptian dictatorship of Hosni Mubarak was falling. More than 100,000 people filled Cairo's Tahrir Square in wild celebration. Among those in the crowd was our 60 Minutes colleague, correspondent Laura Logan. A mob turned on Laura and her 60 Minutes team and singled her out in a violent sexual assault. As she was pulled into the frenzy, the camera recorded her shout. Stop! And I'm screaming, thinking, if I scream, if they know, they're going to stop. You know, someone's going to stop them, or they're going to stop themselves because this is wrong. And it was the opposite. This is the more I screamed, it turned them into it, it turned them into a frenzy. The savage assault Absolutely. turned into a murderous fury. I felt them tear out. They literally just tore my pants to shreds. And then I felt um, my underwear go. I didn't even know that they were beating me with um, flagpoles and sticks and things because I couldn't even feel that because I think of the, of the sexual assault was all I could feel. I thought I was gonna die. They were tearing my body in every direction at this point, tearing my muscles. And they were trying to tear off chunks of my scalp, not trying to pull out my hair, holding big wads of it, trying to, literally trying to tear my scalp off my skull. And I thought, uh, when I thought, I'm gonna die here. But I think there are a lot of women who experience these kind of things. She was just one of hundreds of victims in Tahrir Square. Now, getting back to the New Year's Eve rapes in Europe, many of the major news outlets would not report on this until after a strong public backlash, according to the BBC and The Local. The mayor of Köln blamed the victims, drawing harsh criticism from the German public, according to the BBC. She also said that it was, quote, completely improper, unquote, to say that the perpetrators were refugees, according to the BBC. So in other words, it was politically incorrect to actually identify the attackers. Oh, and speaking of denial and the betrayal of the German people, Interior Minister of North Rhine-Westphalia Jaeger said, quote, We will not accept that groups of North African men gather expressly for the purpose of debasing women by sexually assaulting them, unquote. This is according to Deutsche Welle. And Jaeger was so low down, so callous, so inhuman, so disgusting that he said, quote, What happens on the right-wing platforms and in chat rooms is at least as awful as the acts of those assaulting the women. This is poisoning the climate of our society, unquote, according to the BBC. The German people took it upon themselves to compile a map of crimes committed by the migrants and refugees, which you can see here. The purple markers represent sexual assault, and the red markers represent attacks of children, including sexual assaults of children. Oh, and the black represents murder or attempted murder, according to the Beltway and Einstein for the map. As you can see, there are some incidences recorded for Italy, Austria, and Switzerland on this map. 
Sexual assaults by migrants on New Year's Eve were also reported in Finland, Austria, and Switzerland, according to News Corp Australia, and in multiple cities in Sweden, according to Sidesvenskan and Sveriges Radio. Keep in mind, as we pointed out earlier, according to Eisenfeld, they only know of a small fraction of the crimes that the police know about. In Helsinki, Finland, there were reports of, quote, widespread sexual harassment, unquote, according to the Daily Telegraph. The deputy chief of police in Helsinki announced that, quote, there hasn't been this kind of harassment on previous New Year's Eves or other occasions for that matter. This is a completely new phenomenon in Helsinki, unquote, according to Yahoo News. But the National Bureau of Investigation tried to deny that the sexual assaults in Helsinki were planned beforehand on social media as they were for other cities in Europe, according to Kiersey. Look, I could go on and on with this, but I want to get this video out before New Year's Eve. So, let's turn to the Quran. What does the Quran have to say about rape? I've always known that Islam is pro-rape. I mean, I just didn't think that these migrants and refugees would act this way in such large numbers, but they have been acting that way. Now, I know some of you are going, Oh my god, that's racist, Islamophobia, it's pro-rape. Yes, it is pro-rape. Let me show you. Oh, and for this next part, you may want to go get your Quran off the shelf and read along with me so that you can see for yourself. Wait, you don't have a Quran? Well, then why the fuck are you pretending to know what is or is not in the Quran, you dishonest quack? Surah 23, which was revealed at Mecca, meaning that it's an earlier surah that could be abrogated by later surahs if it conflicts with them, begins by saying, Successful indeed are the believers, who are humble in their prayers, and who shun vain conversation, and who are payers of the poor do, and who guard their modesty. Save from them their wives, or the slaves that their right hand possesses, and then they are not blameworthy. Slaves that their right hand possesses. Hmm. This phrase, right hand possesses, this is a linguistic convention found in the Quran. It just means those who are yours, your slaves, your captives. You can do with them as you wish, including rape. Surah 4 is a Medinan surah, which means that it abrogates or overrules any earlier surah if there's any conflict. So this is the final word. Whenever you see it, it's a Medinan surah, that means it's the final word on any given thing. So, in surah 4, beginning in 22, we could see that it's not lawful to marry your dad's wife, or to marry your mom, or your sister, or your daughters. But apparently there is a little, little bit of leeway for having sex with two sisters together, because it says, And it is forbidden unto you that you should have two sisters together, except what hath already happened of that nature in the past. Bong, chicka, wow. <laughs> So, and then Surah 424 says that all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom your right hand possesses. Captives. Those who you seize. By the way, the Latin word for seize is rapier, which is where we get the word rape from. Because, you know, you grab a rape victim, you seize them, you hold them captive, and you rape them. Now let's look at Surah 33, which, by the way, is a Medinan Surah, meaning that it abrogates or overrules anything that might contradict it anywhere in the Quran. Turning to 50, we see that it says, O prophet, lo, we have made lawful unto thee thy wives, unto whom thou hast paid their dowries, and those whom thy right hand possesseth of those whom Allah hath given thee as spoils of war. And so we can see, according to the Quran, that it's okay to go out and rape women who you capture. Yes, that's right. It says right there in the Quran that you can rape women whom you capture. The Quran, that is Islam, advocates rape. So these migrants who are rapists are not breaking with their religion whatsoever. So don't listen to these apologists out there who say this has nothing to do with Islam. Islam's a religion of peace. No, Islam is not a religion of peace. It's a religion of war and rape. And it says right there in the Quran, you can rape women whom you capture, whom your right hand possesses. That is what the Quran says. So here's my prediction for New Year's 2017, and I really hope I'm wrong. I hope you guys make a fool out of me and show me that I'm wrong about this, but this is what I predict will happen. Just like last year, migrants will go online, talk to each other, pre-plan, and coordinate waves of rapes. They will go out on New Year's Eve and do this in mass numbers. It will then be denied by both the establishment and by the citizenry. Again, I hope I'm wrong about this. I really do, but... <sighs> You know, you can bank on the stupidity and the denial of the regressive left. And part of the reason why it will happen again this year is because of the people who last year denied it. I'm talking to you, quote-unquote, feminists, people who do not actually believe in equality of men and women. I'm talking to you, regressive left people. I'm talking to people like Lacey Green. I'm talking about people like Anita Sarkeesian and the Young Turks. And maybe, just maybe, the fact that so many blonde European women have dyed their hair a darker color, that may 
result in fewer rapes. But somehow I don't think so. It's not just the color of their hair, it's the color of their skin. Oh, and by the way, you notice that this is, this is a racist attack. I mean, we're talking about people of a certain ethnicity targeting people of a certain ethnicity. They are targeting white European women. Oh, and actually some young white European boys too, to rape them. That is racism. First racism is not a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. Only white people can be racist. First racism is not a thing. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Sure. You fucking morons. I can hardly wait to see what Glenn Greenwald and Reza Aslan have to say about the wave of rapes that's probably going to occur. So that's my prediction. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. So what should be done about all this? Am I saying that all Muslims should be kicked out of Europe? No. Am I saying that all migrants should be kicked out of Europe? No. So what am I saying? Well, I am saying that as with any problem, for an effective solution to be possible in the first place, we must address the problem with honesty. After we address the problem with honesty, not before, then come and ask me what I think should be done about the problem, because if we don't address the nature, scale, and scope of the problem with honesty and accuracy, no effective solution can be properly worked out, of course. Intentions alone are not good enough. As with any problem, we have to address this problem with honesty. So again, we have to begin with honesty. As usual, in the video description below, you can find links to support the claims that I make in this video or in any video. And I'll tell you what, also in the video description below, I'll, uh, I'll post links to any articles that address any wave of rapes that occur on the New Year celebration this year. So scroll down, look at the video description below, click on the links and see for yourself, or you can keep your head up your ass and perpetuate real rape culture that is Islam. And my final word is peace and love to everyone.